ready? Yeah. All right, here we go. Well, it is the very first day of spring break, and if you're looking behind me, you're probably like, uh, if it's spring break, then why are you at school, Karen? <laughs> and you would absolutely be right. The truth is, is I really didn't have enough time to clean up everything that I needed to clean up from this week. Um, if you've been following my posts on Instagram, um, you probably saw that my students were tie-dyeing this week and I made a digital escape room for the students to learn all about the chemistry of tie-dye. So needless to say, with all the craziness with the testing, I didn't have too much time to clean up all the bottles and all the materials that I was using. So what I figured I would do is I would come in, I would do all the grading that I had to do, all the cleanup that I had to do, and then that way I don't have to work over break and I could really just enjoy my break with the exception of putting in lesson plans. Of course, I have to put those in. I tend to work on Sunday, so I'll probably do it on the Sunday before I go back to school. Anyway, so it was a really packed week. My students were doing some standardized testing with the NJSLA. Um, it really kind of messed around with our schedule a little bit. So I had one class a lot more often than all my other classes. And so because of that, what I ended up doing was trying out some lessons that I really have always wanted to try out that maybe I didn't get a chance to make or I, I didn't get a chance to try out before just because, you know, we do have to keep to a schedule. Um, we do have to get the, through the curriculum. So I really used this as an opportunity to try out some different things. And so one of the first things that I did was a digital escape room. So let me show you what it looks like. So this is the digital escape room I made for my students to learn all about the chemistry of tie-dye. The theme was hashtag tie-dye fail. So what I did was I created a fake Instagram account and I pretended as if I were a student that was posting throughout the day about my interactions leading up to um, tie-dyeing. And so um, what I did was I had the students um, pay attention to these clues. So there was a clue for each Instagram post and they had to write their answers here. So for example, I pretended that these were gym shorts and they needed a certain blend of material in order to make sure that the dye adheres to the shirt. So cotton was the correct answer. Um, if we come down here, I wanted to show you that, like let's say you type in the wrong molecule it'll actually tell you that it's wrong. So it'll say much match pattern or must match the, you know, or try again. So you can write in different things. So this is supposed to be cellulose. And once the kids type it in, they will get the fact that it's white. And so that'll tell them, okay, they can move on and, the, and their answer is correct. They can't actually submit the Google form down the bottom until they have all the answers put in correctly. And then they can click the submit button. So um, not only did it teach them about the chemistry of tie-dye and the necessary blends for the shirt, but it also talked a little bit about the procedure and the soaking process and um, some of the different patterns. So for example, this is the bullseye pattern. So it just helped them to um, think a little bit more about um, the tie-dye process and how um, they can you know, really get the best tie-dye t-shirt possible out of this. So setting up the activity was pretty easy. Um, I actually ordered a kit from Flynn that includes pretty much everything that you need. The only thing it didn't have were gloves and gallon-sized Ziploc baggies for the kids to bring their shirts home in. Um, fortunately, I was only doing it with one class, so that made it pretty easy. I didn't have to buy too, too much, so I actually bought the gloves and the Ziploc bags on Amazon. Um, it was here in no time, and then the kits had everything that they need. The kit includes rubber bands. I did purchase some other rubber bands from Amazon too because I was worried that I would run out because they didn't have quite, quite that many in the Flynn kit. But yeah, it includes the dye, the sodium carbonate, the urea. It also includes these um, like large pipetters, which are fine, but I thought that there'd be more risk for like spilling the dye. So I decided and opted for um, these like little squirt bottles instead. Um, I'm really glad I did. I think they worked out really well. So these squirt bottles are like handheld little bottles and the kids were able to use them a lot more easily, I would say, than the pipetters. It, it wasn't as much like dripping and that's what I was kind of worried about. All the dripping. Um, the other thing that I will say is if you do end up doing this with your kids, make sure that you have the students apply the dye over the sink. Don't allow them to do it on any of the surfaces or you'll just have dye everywhere and it's a pain in the neck to clean up. So have the kids, you know, hold their shirt over the sink and then they can apply the dye on top. 
and then also of course tell them to have their bag ready so that they can kind of just throw it right in the bag um, so that seemed to kind of help with the chaos I had about six kids tie-dyeing at you know at once um, so I had the kids kind of standing at the sinks and you know they were kind of all working together to make sure that they weren't getting dye all over the floor um, which I really appreciated I really appreciated I appreciated how appreciative my students were and really um, their shirts came out amazing they looked you know amazing the, the colors were vibrant and so I definitely would order the same exact kit from Flynn hands down um, definitely the dye is the real deal so I was really impressed um, even my shirt came out really, really great. So, um, you know, you'll also need some kind of flat surfaces for the kids to lay their shirts down to make their designs. And then the rest is really up to them as far as the types of colors and things that they want to use. Um, there's some really great tutorials that I'd be happy to share in the description below. But with that said, I'm going to get out of here because I actually have dinner plans. So it is Friday night, and for once, I am not teacher tired. So I am going to go out, and I'm going to enjoy my spring break. Um, but if you're celebrating Passover or Easter, I hope you have a wonderful holiday. I am going to take some time off, so I'm probably not going to post any vlogs next week. But I will see you definitely in two weeks. Thank you so much for watching, and have a great weekend. Thanks so much for watching to the end of this video. I hope you found the information helpful as you teach science to your students. I really don't want to lose touch, so please make sure that you hit both like and subscribe so you get notifications every time I post a new video, and I'll catch you later.